Do Asians love EDM as much as white people love country, Latinos love reggaeton, and black people love rap? Huh? Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David, we just got back from Las Vegas from our very first EDC event. We bought in, we took a plane, we went there to join the rest of the Asian world. Uh, what did we see there? Uh, the Skydeck VIP zone is about 70% Asian. General admission is about 25% Asian. Considering America is 6% Asian, it's like 40% Asian. I mean, it's really overrepresented. I thought I was in like an engineer or computer science or medical program. For years on the internet, people have asked the question, why do Asians love EDM festivals so much? Why, why, why? We'll pop up all these little questions that people have asked. Well, David, we have 10 reasons why Asians love EDM. Now, you may think that we're complete outsiders. We've been keeping up with the scene for a while. I've actually met Elenium and Marlon from the Bass Jackers. So, you know, I, I, I told them, I talked to them about some of this stuff because they got a lot of Asian fans, by the way. Um, so here are 10 reasons why Asians love EDM. Let us know in the comments down below which reasons apply to you and if you think we left any out. Do you agree, disagree, guys? We're not the first people to talk about it. Point number one. There is a historical context for Asians to like EDM because there has always been a decently large Asian rave scene. Someone told me, Andrew, that we are an AZN raver 3.0. Wow. 1.0 was in the 1990s with the Pet Shop Boys, Mystic Boys. Uh, AZN raver number 2.0. This was like Exchange LA days, Ken Loy. Mm -hmm. And we are right now in AZN Ravers 3.0, which is Steve Aoki, but the favorite DJs, like you said, are Griffin, Elenium, and uh, Porter Robinson. Guys, uh, this is back when it was more referred to as like techno, trance, like the term EDM wasn't really even used. And then also it was highly, highly and tightly knit with the uh, AZN racer scene. And this is when, you know, you had the light gloves and all these hand movements this is where it came from. This is, th there, there was an Asian rave scene before uh, EDC was even an event, okay? Before Insomniac started throwing stuff in Orlando or LA, this is this is the Asian race. Yeah, scene. I mean, basically, long story short, I would say since the 1980s, which is when like Asian Americans really started popping up, like from our generation, they've only been favorited, uh, favorited two types of music. And one is EDM and one is hip hop. But I would say out of like three decades, probably hip hop got like one decade and the other two decades went to EDM. And right now we are in an EDM decade. All right, point number two, EDM is culturally open, as in you don't really have to buy into any specific culture to enjoy it. And this is different than other genres of music. It does feel like sometimes uh, other genres of music belonging, I guess, to other ethnic groups in America. Sometimes, I'm not saying for sure, it could feel a little bit like uh, self glamorizing you know like when you're at a country show it's like if you ain't a country boy then what are you doing at the show or like at a hip-hop show it might be like man if you're not like us then really what are you right. or at the reggaeton they're like hey you have to be spanish to understand the rhythms of the like the romantic art yeah i mean there's oftentimes no words to songs there are songs with words but they're usually about very relatable topics like love and being free and being positive you know oh love is a tragedy i mean that's a good song by the way but you know what it's a very relatable topic and there's no like specific stories and slang that you have to know about right even understand. though a lot of edm music is produced in like sweden on a computer it's never like uh if you are swedish on a computer you can't be here yeah no it's very wide open in a way i'd almost say it's like a blank canvas the only culture is to have peace love unity and respect plur and uh, i do think that's been changing though someone told me that as edm has become hyper mainstream especially in the azn raver 3.0 stage which is right now that like everybody else has started to come in. It's sort of like when the tech bros started coming into tech yeah. and the pure like technologists are feeling like, hey man, I don't know this guy from like Alpha Sig keeps like trying to like beat me up. Uh, this kind of moves on to point number three, Asians feel accepted here. Guys, we know being minorities in America, there's not that many big mainstream parties that Asians feel completely accepted. But I will tell you this, EDC, you know, it's built into the culture to be accepting, accepting of all types of people wearing all types of clothing. So 
when you're Asian there, you don't really feel like you're standing out. Yeah, I think there's two types of acceptance. There is consumer acceptance, which is you going to the show, how do you feel? And then on the back end, how many Asians are getting money, like points, either producing the music or throwing the events. And EDM, Andrew, Asians are getting money, uh, well, Asians are spending money, obviously, as consumers, but a lot of Asians are making money oh. as DJs. Yeah. Whether that's like, uh, like we said, you know, there's been Asian DJs, DJ Shadow going all the way back to Ken Loy, to now Steve Aoki, Zoo, uh, the names are like sort of endless. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I would even say comparing it to an event like Coachella, Coachella is much more about being cool, putting on your best fit, you wanna go viral for your outfit. But EDC is like, even if you don't have a good outfit, no one's like bugging out. No one's gonna like look at you be like, oh, you're a scrub, you know? It's just not a judgmental space to be honest. And also one last criticism that some people have said, uh, some people ask the question that, do Asians like EDC because they feel accepted there but accepted by white people. I don't know, because it's mostly still a white event actually at the majority of it. Oh no, for sure. I mean, um, EDM like has gone through a lot of phases and people perceive EDM to be a upper middle class white music genre. Yeah. But particularly for progressive, like open-minded middle class. Right, number four, all types of Asians go to EDM festivals. Now I'm talking about everything from Asian thugs to Asians frats and sororities. You're talking about Asian mm. medical students, Asian engineers to Asian CEO tech founders. Right, you're talking about geek money to street money. They got everything in between. Yes. I think of the different groups that you see at um, EDM festivals, but mostly that's to be honest, just mostly white and Asian from what I've seen. Uh, I would say that Asians have like every single archetype of Asian. Whereas yeah. when I see the whites at EDM shows, they tend to be more like one or two different uh -huh. types. But if I examine the Asians, it's like they got all like 20 types. Yo, David, when we were at EDC, you know, we did uh, happen to have access to the Skydeck VIP area. And let me tell you this, there was like shirtless Asian thugs like tatted up from head to toe. And right. they were just like, just loving the music. So, And there was uh, the table across was like some CEO tech founders, some crypto kids and just all, all different types of backgrounds, guys. Maybe it's an event not just to bring all people together, but all Asians and together. I, and I think that once that in ASEAN Raver 3, Dotto, like we we're talking about the three different segments, once it got super mainstream, at some point the snowball just keeps on rolling. Yeah. No, and, and other Asians who are not really EDM like us, we just end up going because we're just like, I don't know, all Asians are going. Yeah, so, and also I do think that uh, to the point of Asians either loving hip hop, which was mostly from 2002 to 2012, but a lot of those people that were hip hop producers or rappers, if they wanted to stay in the music industry, Andrew, they actually switched over to EDM to get money, whether they're like producing the shows or making the beats. The reason that that's relevant, Andrew, is because me and you loving hip hop, hip hop and EDM are not oppositionally to each other. They're sort of like cousins. There's artists, Andrew, like a Yultron or Waka Flocka who made the jump from the hip hop world to the EDM world. Point number five, it is an escape from what is often otherwise a stressful and compressed Asian life. I mean, listen, if you talk to anybody who discovered EDM festivals and felt accepted there, they almost are like, it was just so freeing. Like I, I just, I kind of dropped everything. I didn't have to think about my overbearing parents and I didn't have to think about this and that. And it was just an escape. People like escapes. And let me tell you this, it is a different world when you go to these festivals, especially EDC. The way they build it up, the music and the looks and everything, it's just like, you're almost in a, a dreamland. Yeah, and I don't think it's like for everybody. Some people, they're just like, you know, it's just another reason to party. I've been partying my whole life, but you're right. There is a segment of people, specifically probably East Asian with like very high expectation tiger parents who's going as like almost this uh, like party 101, mm -hmm. you know, in addition to their like school syllabus. Right. And they're trying to get an A. Point number six, for some Asians and some people in general, it feels like a spiritual moment and especially for those who are maybe not very religious. Ooh. Now, I mean, I think if you've ever met anybody that has really discovered EDM and maybe they were on the substances as well, but they were like, oh my gosh, I felt free. I just opened up to the music and it was just like a, a spiritual moment for myself. And uh, maybe I feel better about myself. Maybe it helped with depression or whatever it was, but like, it definitely sounded like they had, they found God at, at, at EDC. No, for sure. I mean, I think it's like scientifically proven, whether it's like the BPM rate or the heart syncopation with your heartbeat, um, different things. It's like, Andrew, I saw this quote in this article where somebody said, you know, this EDM stage brought me closer to God than any book ever has. 
Whoa. Yeah. I mean, it's possible, guys. Again, you know, music. Yeah, I do think it but depends on your prior, like, religious upbringing or exposure. Yeah. I, I do think, like, for example, like, perhaps if you grew up at a, you know, African-American Baptist church where every Sunday you're already up singing and, and you're moving along with the choir and stuff like that, you know, and you have that as part of your life, maybe you don't need EDM music as much to get up off your feet. And right. Move no, you probably Perhaps. would prefer to be yeah. at uh, Kanye Sunday service. Right. Right. I mean, maybe you know. I mean, I'm just making generalizations. But guys, point number seven: EDM DJs have very relatable images that I think is very uh, appealing to Asians. Right. Uh, spend a lot of time in front of the computer. Usually, like prep school backgrounds. Or they're nice not, guys. Not, they're, yeah, they're nice guys. No uh, rap sheets for the most part. Not like uh, you know, it's not like other genres could could potentially get kind of crazy i think that that's why people like them too but you know rock stars wrecking hotel rooms or, or rappers getting shot yeah overall edm djs are often guys who even used to work like as engineers or doing something with the computer and then they got into producing music and then you know some of them even have like a anime background for example so oh, guys porter robinson and millennium big anime fan yeah i've heard asian guys time after time be like hey Man, I, I think I could be an EDM DJ. That looks lit. I'm not going to lie. Seeing how many ABGs are there, <laughs> I wish I was. You know, I'm just kidding. David, what if instead of being in a rap, we were just into EDM this we whole time? We done picked the wrong genre. Hey, headlining, you know, kinetic field, fun, bro. No, hey, Andrew, we bought the wrong stock. <laughs> Um, point number eight, you can dress um, very revealing and sexy without being judged. Also, you could partake in a number of different substances and not be judged. Yeah, it's kind of a time to just not be judged. This goes back to the whole cultural aspect where, you know, and I think it's really big for Asian guys who like to work out because they're like, when else do I get to show off to the world a bunch of non-Asians that I'm really, really buff, that I've been counting my macros? Well, this is a great time. Just take off your shirt and no one's even going to judge you it makes perfect sense even with women as well obviously you want to dress very sexy um without the connotation that you're going to be harassed i'm not saying none of that stuff happens but it probably doesn't happen as often as you know considering how many people are there but like yes the whole idea is that you can walk around and you have space to vibe out and people aren't going to like no it is you. a safe space i mean i think that, that that's what their general rule is it's like we want to provide a safe space for you to have a fantastic galactic experience but remove the downside risk um, of, you know, potentially what could happen in the high risk exposure environments. Uh, point number nine, it is one of those few events in the world that Asians feel comfortable mobbing to in large groups. We're talking about WhatsApp text groups of like 20, 30 people who are going to EDC, right? And whether you can meet up with each other because it's a logistical nightmare, but like they just, it's, it's an easy buy-in. Asians are like, hey, we're all going, let's go. And other Asians are like, all right, I'm in. You know I'm what's funny? Go. And I was doing research for this article in 2015. There was kind of a controversy in the EDM world, at least in America, where people were complaining about Asian trains, uh, which is almost like a frat stroll but with just a group of friends that doesn't want to lose each other. So some people were saying like they were getting really mad at that. But Andrew, at uh, 2022 now, it doesn't seem like it's a big issue anymore. These articles were from 2015. I know what you're talking to do because Asians, you know, especially for all the reasons listed, they're going to go there as a group and feel comfortable with each other. They want to link together. So they kind of make these long snakes that kind of cut through the crowd. And basically, if you're a person in the crowd, you have to like move. Let, let me tell you this. I, I know that it's, it's big because Andrew, there is a subtle Asian ravers group on Facebook with like 120,000 members. And that's pretty much just America and Canada. Yeah. I, I think it really comes down to Asians really seeking safe spaces and, and EDC is one of the more wild, still safe spaces. No, it's lit and it's safe. And yeah. the, how often do you find those two things juxtaposed and yo, layered together? Yo, if I'm, it's lit and it's safe, Asians are gonna be there. Um, and point number 10, Asians uh, have embraced EDM because they don't necessarily have their own form of music. Like we said earlier, Andrew, it seems like a lot of us, especially obviously Southern white people, they tend to gravitate towards uh, country music. Northern white people, they tend to gravitate towards rock music. African-Americans gravitate towards hip hop. Latinos gravitate towards reggaeton. I'm, obviously these are like, they're not really, they're, they're, this is just like the main group that consumes it. Or Desi people, you can ask any Desi American, uh, Indian American, and they're like, oh, I, I listen to some Bhangra. At least I'm familiar with it. Which is funny enough, Jay Sean was at EDC. I'm yeah. not saying Jay Sean is Bhangra, but he <laughs> did have some Bhangra influences yeah. in his earlier albums. But I think, you know, and 
shout out to k-pop we have k-pop but it doesn't use a lot of necessarily like traditional asian elements right, right so right. i think when it comes to music that is specifically infused with asian elements there's not really a pop one right now right. now there are some songs here there from jay chow wang lee home yeah. that had the good song the dun, 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 and different dun, dun, artists from uh, japan know. and korea and vietnam but at the for the most part the vast majority of music consumed even in language in those countries doesn't have no. a lot of Asian instruments because the West has sort of determined what is modern music yeah. by using uh, their drum kits and their uh, guitars and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I do feel like um, Indians were the one like Asian group that has deeply infused their traditional music. Yeah. And I'd actually just heard like a like EDM dance song that was mixed with traditional Indian music, which we'll play like five seconds of it right now. You know what I'd like to see? I think that we generally think that Asian culture doesn't have a lot of like rhythm and drums in it, but we have taiko drums and we have the drums that you use for, for Chinese New Year, the dum, 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 you know, for the line dance. So I don't know if people could somehow incorporate those. Those would still count as Asian elements in my opinion. Elenium and Porter could owe us one. I'd like to see how they would flip it as outsiders. Uh, I have a bonus point. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, EDM, trance, house, techno are really big in Asia as well. And it's partially because Asia has probably interfaced more with Europe or interfaced with Europe earlier on than it did with American culture. And But also, if you go to any club in Asia, like any club in any big city in Asia, uh, for the most part, they're going to play mostly EDM, techno, house, stuff like Dude, that. Dude, it is super common. And I remember growing up at church, there was like somebody at uh, our church that was really into the JDM scene. They were listening to techno and trance Tupac remixes in the year like 2005. Yeah. Like literally, this is 05. Pac died in 95 and they were playing Techno Tupac. Let me pop up some videos of uh, shuffling in China because people love shuffling in China. I do think it also goes down to the electronic music or the MIDI music of even games like Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, etc., etc. I do think there's some tie-in with anime RPGs as well as even the Blade soundtrack. And that was the first time I got exposed to that like deep house trance, you know, from Europe. The <laughs> Actually, Andrew, for me, my biggest takeaway is that it's just something that fits with Asians, even though it's not inherently Asian. There's nothing inherently Asian about computer science. There's nothing inherently Asian about medicine. That's been like a worldwide thing, yeah. right? It's just like numbers and stuff like that. But for whatever reason, Asians really gravitate towards it in like disproportionate numbers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the question is like, does EDM help Asians find a release and find their voice? Or does it just help Asians feel like they fit in like everybody else? I don't know, guys. These are just bigger questions. I'll leave it at that. And let us know what you thought about our list in the comments down below. There's more ABGAZNs at EDMs than there are ABGs at KTVs. Oh, yeah. So definitely. that could also be another factor I forgot to mention. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We are the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.